In front of me, I have the brand new iPhone 7. Whether you are team Android or team iPhone, anyone can appreciate a well-built phone. And that's what we're here to find out. Can this matte black iPhone 7 survive my durability test? I've tested over 38 phones so far, including the previous iPhones. So let's see how this newcomer does. Let's start with the scratch test. I have a set of mineral picks that tell me where the hardness of the glass falls on most scale of hardness. Sapphire glass would be around an 8 or a 9 on most scale. Or plastic screens like the Galaxy S7 Active would scratch at a level 3. Normally the average smartphone will start scratching at a level 6. And this appears to be the case with this new iPhone 7. It is on par with the typical smartphone screen hardness. Coins and keys won't scratch it. But you should keep it protected anyway. There are still plenty of abrasive materials in the environment, hiding in the pockets of your jeans or purse that can cause scratches to the screen of your phone. Let's jump down to the home button, or better said, the home touchpad now, since it doesn't click anymore. There have been rumors that the home button and the camera lens are made of sapphire, which would make them extremely scratch resistant, nearing the point of diamonds, which would be nice. Some smartphones, like the Galaxy phones, use a plastic home button that can scratch easily. But so far, this touchpad can resist the scratching from my razor blade. But is it sapphire, or is it just normal glass? The easiest way to find out is using the hardness picks. Like I mentioned before, glass will scratch at a 5 or 6, but sapphire should be around an 8 or a 9. And since this button has a deep scratch with a level 6 pick, we know for sure that it's regular glass and not sapphire. The earpiece is made of metal and very solidly stuck in place. It won't be sliding around or falling out like the old iPhone 4s did. Now with the back aluminum, I will be scratching a jet black version very soon, but so far this matte black version holds up extremely well to my keys. You can hardly tell that it's been scratched. Razor blades, on the other hand, will scratch the phone just fine. And this is why I always keep my razor blades in a separate purse. You should too, unless you want one of these $800 aluminum curly cues. Now for the camera lens. This glass piece is protecting the new 12 megapixel camera inside of the phone, and it is definitely scratch resistant, which is awesome. My razor blade does nothing to it. But is it sapphire? It still scratches deeply at a level 6, so it doesn't look like anything on this phone is sapphire. Sapphire does have its pros and cons, but I'll save that for another video. Next to the camera lens, we have what Apple is calling the Quad LED True Tone Flash. Initially, I thought that this might be four different colored LEDs, bringing even more life to pictures than just a dual colored flash would. But while indeed there are four LEDs, it is still just the same normal two colors that the older iPhone 6 has. The flash is just brighter now, because there are more of the LEDs, which is good. Checking out the build quality of the rest of the phone, we find out that the buttons are metal, which is ideal. Plastic buttons tend to discolor or pop out more often than metal buttons do. So thumbs up to Apple for sticking with quality materials. The antenna bands are still plastic, but that's a necessity with Apple's design at this point in time. If you remove these antenna bands, no more cellular connection. If we look down here, we see where the headphone jack doesn't exist. Now this is a problem on multiple levels. I'll go more in depth about this in my next video. But looking at it from purely a durability perspective, this is an extremely bad move. Just like any piece of electronics, the charging port component has a finite lifespan. Nothing lasts forever. It is designed to withstand a certain amount of physical wear and tear. This means it could stand 5,000 or 10,000 plugs and unplugs. Nobody knows the exact number but Apple, but essentially, now that Apple is combining the headphone jack and the charging port into one, we have two accessories using the same single port, doubling the rate of wear and tear. So once this singular lightning port dies or reaches the end of its lifespan, your phone is toast. There's no backup wireless charging either. So if you are a person who's ever had their charging port stop working on a previous phone, you can sit back and watch your iPhone 7 port die in half the time. Unless you fork over the dough for some wireless headphones, which is what Apple wants you to do anyway. I plan on making a video more in depth about the headphone jack in a few days. It'll be revealing. So subscribe and turn on your notifications for that. What do you think? Is it good that Apple killed the headphone jack? Let me know down in the comments. On to the burn test. The IPS LCD of the iPhone 7 lasted almost 10 seconds under direct contact with flame before the pixels got hot and turned off going completely black. It is interesting to see what screens recover and which ones don't. Samsung AMOLED screens currently turn white and do not recover from flame. The iPhone, however, completely recovered and functions as normal. It is cool to the touch within seconds. Now the bin test. The iPhone 6 had a nifty little trick that would permanently match the phone to the curve of your body if you ever sat on it. 
The iPhone 7 does not appear to be as flexible. It is interesting to watch the waterproofing adhesive between the frame of the phone and the screen. You can watch it tear as I heavily flex the phone. So while this phone will not suffer from bin gate or catastrophic failure, I would still not sit on it, just to keep that water resistance intact. Once that adhesive is torn, it will not be as resistant as it once was. Overall, Apple has made another solid phone. I appreciate the build quality. I still have plenty more to say about that headphone jack, but that'll come in another video. All of my behind the scenes stuff can be found on Instagram and Twitter, and there's a very good chance I'll start an iPhone 7 giveaway on my Twitter in the next week or so. So follow me there if you're interested in that kind of thing. And if you aren't subscribed yet, but love technology, hit that subscribe button. I review tech from the inside. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you around.